Hello, friends. I am Vivek Naik. Uh, if the organizers have missed it, I would just like to introduce myself. Uh, well, I am past president of Indian Concrete Institute and managing director of Apple KB. Uh, we are here at uh, India Construction Week 2020. And uh, this is a great thing which is brought to you by CIDC. And I would like to congratulate the organizers and especially Dr. Saroof for giving me this opportunity to be with you. Today, I'm going to talk to you about precast works and jointing of panels. See, precast technology is very much there and it has got its advantages, disadvantages and challenges, which we will discuss this in a short presentation. If you see the history, historically in 18th century, in 18th century, way back around uh, so many, so many years back, I think thousands and thousands of years back. In the Western world, in the Europe, there were some challenges. And to meet out those challenges, they found that construction over the bridge and over the bridge having one more aqueduct. So this is a very typical, very old uh, picture. Uh, but during managing this challenge what the construction people thought that time that it will be better to cast large sections at one side in the surki mortar cure them then transport them to the site and install and i won't say fully that is a this is a pre-cast structure but this is the structure where large pieces were brought together and they were aggregated to make this structure wherein at one level you have an aqueduct and the other level you have a uh, road bridge. Uh, that is the international scenario and historical stage. If you see the Indian scenario, uh, the precast, in 1939 to 1943, uh, in Chennai, uh, Nepai Bridge was constructed and it is constructed with precast and pre stress technology. And even before that, even before that, uh, 1905 to 1910, uh, Madras port, uh, they cast so many piles and uh, other elements, uh, even the long retaining wall, uh, and the wall is to the length of around six kilometers in precast segments and put it there at the place. So, you can say that Picasso has come to the life to meet out the site challenges. We construction engineers thought that why not to cast a piece and then take to the site and just install it so that in situ work can be avoided. And then it went on developing and then there are further uh, developments which we will discuss further. So uh, if you see overall, uh, precast uh, concrete system as such. Uh, what you do is first the concrete, which is the basic ingredient, obviously. But in precast concrete, the concrete is designed to have a good demolding properties. Most of the time, it is demolding time, which is important because the mold is reused and reused, and the repetition of the mold carries the essence of precasting technology. So quicker demolding is one parameter. So you need higher early strength. So also you need lesser of a curing time or uh, there are some uh, dry mixes which are used and then you demold the product and then you put it for the curing, whether it is a steam curing or water curing or uh, any other form of it. And the third aspect when you design concrete is what finish you want after the concrete comes out of the bed, after the concrete is on the side. That is the aesthetics and the finish. So you can be having various molds and uh, on the molds you can have some so many designs in laser, whatever texturing, so that the final product is having that look. Uh, coming to the molds, uh, where the precasting uh, precast concrete is put in is uh, uh, you can have molds in steel, we can have molds in aluminium, you can have it in FRP, PVC, and many other materials also. 
as far as the handling is concerned uh, you design concrete for initial handling that is uh, removing the concrete from the molds and putting it in the yard that is first stage and the second stage is you handle it with crane put it in the flatbed trailers or transport then transport it to the site stack it there and all those handling parameters so that is how you do the handling uh, system in the precast uh, works uh, the most crucial uh, in uh, this discussion where i am going to give a little more emphasis is the jointing of uh, precast segments uh, wherein we talk of jointing technology and jointing materials and obviously the finishing systems so hereafter what we give more emphasis is the overall system but the focus will be on the jointing materials and jointing technologies well uh, as uh, we have seen that uh, why precast yes uh, this is a comparative study and uh, it is sourced from uh, some international manuals and this is just uh, brought in for you people for the understanding that uh, when you do cast in place work <clears throat> comparatively you uh, save uh, time and money and then uh, you have steel and uh, precast composite work uh, then you save little more of it and you want to save more is steel and directly brick work or block work you save further time and precast is the technology which will give you work at a very high speed and maximum of the cost saving this has been proved and that is why today we are talking about the precasting most of the time in india and in uh, the part of the world low cost housing is a very common phenomenon because it is a repetitive job uh, you do uh, housing um, on a very very large scale on uh, in large tenements and uh, you can get the benefit of a precasting technology uh, but not only limited to Uh, the um, housing uh, there are varieties of precast structures that underground structures can be in precast foundations can be in precast tunnel tunnel segments can be in precast the various wall panels and retaining walls can be in precast housing yes we have already uh, talked about it infra buildings larger scale infra buildings can be in precast and not last but the least even the reservoirs or tanks can be very well done in precast just you have to take care of the joints and uh, uh, i will just run through some of the uh, um, uh, pictures of uh, this is about a precast uh, work uh, uh, underground and this uh, the right hand side is a precast barrier these are the barriers which uh, normally you are using uh, for the uh, by the so uh, side of uh, highways and roads uh, so also uh, precast manholes and tanks uh, are quite liberally used and they give you uh, quite a lot of speed and higher quality uh, precast roads uh, you say how many yeah i am not sure but in uh, mostly in every country these days you will find that they have done some precast roads here or there at least somewhere 4 5 km 10 km trial roads are done and uh, they have been found very successful the most important part again is very good quality and in very short time there is a challenge friends when you are doing precast roads that the sub base has to be very very good and the base preparation what i mean uh, a fully leveled base is very very important that is why what you can see in the center of the screen there are shims on the road which is a leveling mark to what extent the fill can be done and to your right you can see the shims are fully embedded and the stone dust or any other subgrade is put flush with that now as you have got a level base you can put your panel up there if there is a little bit of a deviation in this then you will be finding cracks and then there are a lot of challenges Uh, in the road segment uh, uh, next is uh, then when you are done with the road there can be convert uh, many culverts or uh, underpasses below the uh, roads or uh, larger pipe segments where uh, uh, precast things can be used 
because boundary walls and retaining walls have been used uh, from quite initial stages and today also we are using it but now people are going in for new designs uh, and new textures in the precasting things uh, uh, looking at the methods of precasting and the systems uh, one uh, large, uh, thing is you have a large panel system wherein you are doing large infrastructure elements like factories and buildings you have a big segment you cast it and put it into the uh, place so that is one in this system there is a large modules large modules uh, are there and these large modules are cast in one go you have got the entire uh, block of maybe an apartment or at least one or two rooms or even the service blocks because what gives you a benefit is if you look at the overall construction you know friends that uh, when you are doing a building construction maximum time is spent uh, in uh, service area because in the toilets and washrooms you have got electricity water service lines plumbing hot water cold water so many things but if you have got all the things already embedded in a service block and the service block is made ready with the sanitary fittings and brought directly to the site it saves a lot of time and it carries a lot of sense in doing the work that way so that is one plus point of pre casting uh, about the columns and beams casting yes you can do the column casting at one place and just install the column these are the columns of heavy industries and then you can ground them again the connection connection of uh, pre cast column with the foundation is quite crucial and the grouting will come down to that particular part of it in future um, uh, pre casting wherever these connections are avoided especially in the smaller uh, buildings mostly what is useful is footing plus column so you have a stub column and a footing everything put together it should be it can be cast together and then you shift it to the side and that gives a benefit uh, staircase is a quite critical element of pre casting and you can do it in the uh, one uh, uh, two or three elements and directly install it at the site if you are talking about the joints yes there are a lot of codal provisions uh, isbs and astm codes which tell you how to design the joint and which materials are to be uh, used that you can definitely peep into the codal provisions i am not uh, discussing that here but what i am discussing here is the challenge and how to meet the practical challenge uh, see the, the joints can be categorized basically into the vertical and the horizontal segments and then you have a mechanical uh, connect between the two joints and then you have sealants and adhesives and the protection coatings and the protection strip seals are coming on the surface where, which is we can call it as a weather strip or and then the sealants are uh, polyurethane sealant or silicon sealant and many many other things <clears throat> this is one out of it that you have uh, if you are talking about jointing material it is a sealant packing and grout this is how i categorize packing is something a filler and a flexible medium sealants are there to stay on the exterior side of the joint uh, and uh, yeah, there are grouts which are used at the installation stage and this is what uh, we have is a segment uh, of a pre cast uh, segment of a road maybe these are large segments of around uh, at the top it is around 24 meters in width and these segments can be cast and just put it at one place and you can make it a flyover or a bridge and what is crucial is segment bonding adhesive when you put two segments together uh, you need to cover the entire surface area which is coming in contact so uh, normally this is 2 to 3 mm uh, even less than 3 mm and then you squeeze the two segments and the jointing material comes out of it uh, that is obviously at the time of post engineering uh, there is one very very typical thing i have seen is coupler uh, grouts coupler grouts uh, are the uh, grouts which are not very uh, carefully looked into by the construction industry and that is why i think i wanted to 
stress this here that uh, let's go a little further the rating uh, uh, see uh, if you are talking about the precast construction what i said is uh, accurate casting safe transport careful installation at the site and precast jointing and the joint is the key factor <clears throat> why i'm saying uh, joint is the key factor very recently in 2011 in 2011 uh, in san antonio texas uh, where when there was an earthquake almost all the structures which collapsed and the collapses pertaining to the precast were at the failure of the connections and failure at the joints may it is in the column or at the base plate or even pv structure everywhere they were in the joints only and this very well tells us that we need to focus and be more careful at the joint when you are talking about the precast technology this is a typical scene when we noted that improper grouting was done at the joints and the joint plates uh, going further uh, what uh, you see is the precast joint at the foundation level wherein uh, you have a uh, a double pins coming up and you put your column on the top of it or you have a coupler which is uh, added here and it is quite clear from the screen similarly you uh, have a foundation where you can have a column which is either smooth then you put a column put it into the groove of the pocket foundation or you have a rough pocket foundation and you again put it into both the systems are used or uh, the lower part of your screen you can see it is at the site installation where a larger piece of uh, concrete uh, is cast uh, to install the precast column uh, this is what the uh, coupler i mean these are the couplers and the extending pieces uh, these are used for the extension of uh, and the continuity of the reinforcement and there are various uses of it you can use it in the infrastructure like what i have shown over here this is a huge column and the beam connection or vertical connection also uh, these couplers uh, can be tested in the laboratory uh, and uh, the grounds which are used in the coupler are even more important because the coupler basically is a mechanical thing and it can be tested for various mechanical parameters and uh, what i have shown you here on the screen is uh, this coupler and uh, you uh, put the other piece of this uh, reinforcement into the coupler before that you are grouting it uh, the coupler is fully grouted and then you put the next portion over here so this is what i have shown it you on the left hand side of your screen uh, allow this to set then you test it if you splice it horizontally what you should see what you can should see ideally is the right hand side portion this is what i mean the grout along along the rebar should be absolutely full and total so that shows a full grip if you cut the splice right so this is to be done mechanically by force and the other part of the testing the grout is you can put it into the testing machine tensile failures which you see and if you go in for the tensile failure the failure should be in the parent material obviously it should be in the rebar and not in the coupler section well so this coupler section should remain intact and the failure should come here or here whatever it may be and there are various technical parameters in the graphs and all this i am not going into the depth of it but uh, that is what it is uh, in the laboratory we definitely check up uh, this is only a test piece those don't go by this why there are so many openings uh, this is how the test piece of the coupler is put and you check up what is the requisite length of the coupler required for a particular diameter rod and for particular stretch it's a design part of the coupler and then you uh, use it but my main interest and the uh, concern point is how you use the installation grout um see there will be manufacturers this is one of the best manufacturers uh, as yes they have said that it will be pre mixed non shrink free free flow high strength uh, panel grout or joint grout and there will be a test certificate or a manufacturer test certificate 
what is our duty as a consultant or a construction engineer that you get it tested through an accredited laboratory verify the test parameters verify the 